Your lack in communication skills is the reason why you lack in the life that you want. It's the reason why you feel like you can't make the money that you want to, you can't get the man that you want to, you can't even go to the places that you want to. And the root of a lot of it is that you're not good at conversating. You're not good at essentially conveying what you want and getting it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to be better at communication, how to be better at conversation, and all around possibly just improve the quality of your life. So first, I know some of y'all are probably like, but is conversation really that important? Like, why is it so important? To the human species, conversation is the only thing that's keeping us up, right? We are the only species on Earth that, I mean, let's be honest, we run Earth. Like, we're the one that own pets. We're the one that own the banks. We're the one that invents things and do things. But why? Because we're not the fastest, we're not the strongest, and we're actually not even the smartest. I don't know if y'all noticed, but whales can send holographic messages, like telegraphic messages, to other whales of fish that they've seen or things that they've seen. Literally, they can send holographic things with their brain to other whales. I don't know about y'all, but I can't do that. So I would say whales are a bit smarter than us. But why are we the leading species? Simply because we can come together by conversation. Yes, other animals can communicate here and there, but we're able to do it at such a large scale, at such a grand scale, that we were able to create things. This is why we are no longer hunter and gatherers. This is why we have schools. This is why we have businesses and all these other things. This is why somebody even was able to invent the device that you are watching to watch this video. Because we came together, we shared with each other, we communicated with each other. Okay, you wanna grow um, some food? Okay, while you growing food, I'ma build a house. Okay, while you building a house, I'ma do this. Da -da -da -da. And we were able to barter, right? When we used to have the barter system before we had money of sharing things with each other and exchanging things but it came to the point where everybody doesn't have to do everything why because we're able to communicate so the lack of communication is going to cause us to have things like we do now of higher rates of loneliness higher rates of isolation seclusion and depression and at the end of the video i'll link a video that i have to like the dark side of the homebody aesthetic i definitely recommend to check that out but you have to realize a reason why we feel a lot of these things that we do now is because we're lacking a core root of who we are at our base and we have and we've been for thousands of years communicators so our lack of conversation your lack of ability to express yourself effectively and feel like people can understand what you're saying and get to you actually causes you to have a lower quality of life and I don't think we realize how important it is, how it's kept us together for thousands of years, how it's built everything that we have now. People began to communicate. So think about a world where people no longer know how to communicate. Think about a world where people no longer know how to come together. That sounds very isolating. It sounds very depressing. And it sounds like I'm not getting the life that I want to because people don't know what I want. So how are they supposed to give it to me? A lot of people think they're bad talkers, right? I'm bad at speaking, I just don't know how to speak. More than not, you're probably not a bad talker, you're a bad listener. People need to understand the importance of listening when you are having conversations with people. Because what you do is, you have a conversation with someone, right? You might ask someone a question, You might they might say something. What you do is, let's say they're talking for 60 seconds. You do not listen for the entire 60 seconds. You probably listen for five seconds and then they say something that you're like, oh, I, I could relate to that. Or I could talk about this, I could talk about that. And then for the rest of the 55 seconds, you're just thinking about what you're gonna say as a reply. So you're not even listening to them. Like you will be surprised how often you do that and how often people do that to you. A lot of people do not listen nowadays. They wait for their turn to speak. They wait for somebody to say something and it's like, okay, okay okay oh well, how am I gonna connect to them how am I gonna share something how am I gonna keep the conversation going oh they said this let's go and the bad thing about that thing is that it causes us not to have actual conversations it causes us actually to have banter it's a ping pong back and forth she says this I say this she says that I say that you need to get in the habit of actually listening to people so you actually have something to talk about and people don't notice this but the more you listen the more you have to talk about for example Let's say somebody was to say to you, oh, I recently went to Six Flags, right? A lot of people, 
you know, their thing coming back was, oh, wow, I haven't been to Six Flags in so long. Oh, wow, I went to Six Flags the last time, uh, like four years ago. Oh, wow, I used to always go growing up, right? You're thinking about yourself. Instead, why don't you ask that person, oh, uh, what are you, more of a rides person or are you more of like you go for the food and stuff like that? Talk to them about that. They're going to tell you, oh, I love the rides. I go on every single ride. My favorite ride is this, 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 that, 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 this whatever the case may be or now nah, i'm not really into rides i get motion sickness i i just like the food my favorite food is this 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 that cool you possibly can go to another thing after you know off of what they said oh your favorite ride is this that that's um that ride been there for forever whatever whatever go into a conversation then you can talk about you why that gave you multiple options if you would have just said something the first time they went they said they went to six flags the only thing you would have been able to say is oh i haven't been in a long time oh um what does it look like oh you know oh do they still have this ride that's more so of a singular conversation it gives you only really one thing kind of to talk about and then you're just making that thing up off of things you would assume that they know you don't know if they know how long this ride been there you don't know if they know all this other stuff but if you, you know, you be inquisitive and you ask more questions and you kind of get into understanding of, okay, okay, they like this, they talk about this, talk about that. Now you have all these options. This person has told you that they, they're, they're a rides person. They told you that they have, or they told you they have motion sickness. You might have motion sickness. Or they told you their favorite food is this or their favorite ride is that. Now y'all can have an actual conversation. And during the conversation, you have things to pull from to cause a sense of connectivity, to make them understand that you were listening to them. But if you waited that those five seconds, those 10 seconds for them to say something and then you could just respond, you're not actually having a conversation. It's just an idea of ping pong, going back and forth and back and forth. And so you need to actually start listening to people. Go into conversations with the idea of what can this person tell me? What can this person give to me? Instead of trying to figure out, well, what can I give, give to them? And oftentimes too, we don't realize, but this idea of not listening often causes us to think about ourselves. And the reason why we do this is because it causes a dopamine spike in our brains. So dopamine is uh, kind of like the happy chemical in your brain and dopamine is released with things such as sex, with things such as drugs. So needless to say, dopamine is something that we like the feeling of dopamine. And it's just a chemical release in your brain. But you also get dopamine from talking about yourself. So the issue that we also have in conversations is that you speak about yourself in a conversation because you think of it as, oh, I just want to relate to that person or I just want to connect to that person. But little do you know, you're doing it to get that release, to get that happy feeling. And a lot of times too, people don't even notice, the more you talk about yourself in a conversation, the more you have a false sense that 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 person likes you why because you're having dopamine release you're having a good release people just all at you know happens a lot of times with job interviews this can happen sometimes with dating and things of that sense if you go into a job interview and the person is constantly asking more questions about you and you're able to talk about yourself and what you do oh i used to do this and i used to work here and i used to do that you're on a date the person asking questions about you or you're just talking a lot about yourself right you're 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 pitching yourself if you will to them telling them all these things about you you assume oh they must really like me you know I think he really liked me because I told him I did this and I told him I did that. Oh, no, I think I'm gonna get hired for that job because I told him how I used to do this for an internship and I used to do this and I used to do that. It makes you feel good about yourself. And then when you don't get a second date or you don't get that job, you're like, wait, what? You're confused because you have this false sense of this person must like me because when I was talking to them, I felt good. And so one thing I want you to understand is that's a false sense of connectivity it's a false sense of what i guess the mission was and doing something is when you talk about yourself too much and a lot of times too we do it because we may think oh you know i can express how i feel or i can get everything out and i can give them a reason to like me or it could be a sense of i'm doing this thing to have to connect with them and they're gonna like me better because i gave all these connections and i gave all these but you gotta also understand if you talk about yourself and you get a dopamine release that if they talk about themselves, they possibly also get a dopamine release. So if you use all this time not asking people questions, not getting to know about people in depth, you know, you want to do the ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, then they probably actually don't like you. Because when did you ask them a question and let them go in a little bit the same way you wanted to tell them all about yourself? And so I want you to think about that. Like when you're talking to people, 
Am I talking too much about my stuff? When's the last time they really told me something deep about them? Am I just trying to sell to them and pitch to them why I'm the perfect person to date for them? Why I'm the perfect person for this job? Or am I also making them feel like they're a part of the conversation as well? Because they are. And so the way to use this is to ask more questions than you answer. So ask them two questions for every question that they ask you. So think about this in a way of a car, right? The analogy I can think of is a car. You're trying to get from destination A to destination B. If every single time they ask you a question, you're like, okay, my turn, I'm gonna get this near wheel. And then they, you ask them a question, okay, here you go. It's a back and forth, right? Similar to what I said about the ping pong. But if you think about it, that car is going nowhere. It's gonna take you forever to finally get to destination B. But if you let them lead the car for a little bit, hey, you know, hey, what's, what's, what, this, 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 that? Oh, that's interesting. Well, you know, uh, you also like this because you mentioned this. They're driving the car for a bit, right? And then you can take the car back and drive. That will cause more, more, if you will, traction, I guess, to happen. Um, more feet to be driven. I don't know. Crazy analogy. But the whole idea is that let them have some direction. One of the things I think messes us up as well is because we subconsciously want to control the conversation because we want it to go in the way that we want it to go into. We want to talk about topics that we want to talk about. We want to talk about things that we want to do similar to the dopamine release we don't realize it but our body our mind is craving for that please please i can't wait to talk about myself please i can't wait to say something about me please i can't wait to say something that will connect me our bodies are literally craving for that the same way people crave for drugs and all these other things it doesn't seem the same but scientists have found out it releases the same chemical in your brain that dopamine release so I often one thing i've tried to do more is for every two questions Ask, that's when I can finally say something because like I said before with the Six Flags analogy it allows me to know more about this other individual and also the way I look at it is it allows them to also feel like they're part of the conversation and that's one thing I've definitely struggled with because I'm one of those people that I like to relate to people because I feel like it makes us connect more right if I'm relating to them and that they said they went through this oh I went through that oh they said they went through that I went through this and I thought it was a sense of connectivity but I think it subconsciously is a sense of disownership I'm causing them to disown their experience I'm asking them to disown what they've been through because I want myself to feel a part of it I want myself to feel like oh well you can connect to me and the worst time to do this is with trauma. We do this all the time. When something happens to somebody, somebody, you know, let's say their their parent passes away. Oh, I understand. Oh, my mom passed away too. Or my aunt passed away too. Or my And we do it because we think that we're building a sense of connectivity. We think we're building a sense of relatability. But what you're really doing is asking that person to disown their pain because you went through something similar. I've had to stop doing that in conversations. Like if I can have anything of value to say, if I can have anything of, you know, of, of motivation or whatever, depending on the conversation. But I need to stop asking people to disown what they went through, happy or sad, good or bad. Somebody tell you they recently got their degree. Oh, I got my degree in so-and-so from so-and-so college. Oh, I got my degree from so-and-so -so too. And it sounds good, but why don't you let them talk about it more? Oh, what made you go to this college? Oh, how long were you there? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Let them talk about themselves and express themselves. Don't feel like it has to be a thing of, okay, let me get the car back. Okay, you can have it. Let me get the car back. Ask questions about them because it's going to make them feel happier in the conversation. It's going to build a real sense of connectivity because they're also getting the dopamine release. But then they're also able to, you know, tell you more about them so you can figure out if you really like this person or not. But then also you're going to be able to talk about yourself and really feel like it's a real conversation and not just a banter back and forth. And I want you to understand, sometimes this can happen too if we go into the conversation feeling like we're trying to educate someone. Do not go into a conversation trying to educate someone or feeling like, oh, I'm going to tell them about this. Like, I don't need to go into every conversation like, girl, do you know that Wells can send holographic messages to other Wells and tell them about so-and-so? Do I think that's interesting? Yes, I think that is so crazy. That it's, I feel like that's actually magic. But... My thing is I can't go into every conversation ready to tell somebody about something that I learned. And especially when you're starting your self growth journey or you're changing your life, you may feel this very heavy. I know I do as well. Partially that's another reason why I have this channel. I'm actually able to express it to people who want to hear about it instead of just bantering all my friends and family about the newest thing I learned in psychology or self growth.
but I digress. Um, but I had to learn, you can learn something from everyone and that sounds so cliche and it sounds so hoopla, but like have that mindset too. I had to stop having a mindset like I can teach people everything. People can teach me things too because going back to the beginning, if you go into conversations thinking about what you're going to teach this person and what you're going to, the information you're going to tell this person that they didn't know before, you're not listening to them. You're not having a conversation with them. It goes back to the beginning. You're waiting for them to say something so you can interject yourself. You can interject your knowledge. Go into conversations and I don't care if the person is three, five, 25, 45, 50. Go into it that this person has some kind of knowledge that I don't know. And not because like I said, it's cliche. It's something that just sounds good. It's true. Like we need to acknowledge that your life, where you grew up, where you raised, where everything that happened to you is not the end all be all to the world. And it's not the end all be all to all the knowledge that you need to have. Like you will be surprised experiences that people have went through, things that people have went through and they may look at it as being nothing. But you're like, wow, I didn't even know about this. Wow, I didn't even know about that. I was recently talking on the phone with this lady. Um from Mississippi and she was telling me it's some mountain that she lives close to she was saying how she lives kind of um she grew up in a very like a uh, kind of country area and she was saying there was this certain mountain and she was just saying like when they didn't have food they would um they would get the clay off of this mountain and she was like they would mix it up with hot water and they would supplement it for a milk kind of sort of like kind of thing or um, a meal replacement kind of thing. And I was like, wow, like that's crazy. And she was like, yeah, her family has been doing it. Well, everyone in the you know area does it. And she was like, they, long story short, she was just saying how sometimes, you know, they go without and they had to learn to, you know, eat what the animals eat and things of that sort. Now, is that knowledge that's going to probably change my life? No, do I hope I'm ever in a situation where that needs to happen to me? No, but I felt like it was something interesting. And I went into the conversation feeling like she can teach me something and she taught me something. And I know that she taught me because I was able to remember it. That's another thing too as well. A lot of times we don't even remember what people say to us because like I said, we're, we're, we don't hear the rest of the 55 seconds. We wait for them to say something that we can connect to, but we don't digest the rest of the information that they're saying. And so I want you to think about that. Stop going into conversations feeling like you can teach everybody everything. I don't care if it's a five-year-old. You would be surprised what five-year-olds will tell you. A five-year-old may be like, yeah, my mom said that you bald headed and that you, you, you stink when you come over her house. That's literally how five-year-olds talk. And it will really start making you think about how people think about you if you talk to their kids. Like, I'm, I'm not telling y'all to like, you know, uh, uh, become you know like an agent with people kids and like pride to people kids but you will be surprised how much kids will tell you kids will tell you their life story literally what their parents have been struggling with for years in the grocery store aisle and you'll be like oh wow uh, I thought she liked me but she told her kids that I stink and then I'm bald headed wow that's interesting but if you go into the conversation like oh she's five years old she can't teach me something she can't i'm not saying she's gonna teach you about how to make a million dollars tomorrow but she might teach you that this girl who you thought was your friend is not really your friend and that might help you more than you ever thought it would you know what i'm saying like stop, stop going into stuff feeling like you can't learn something you can learn something from everyone i had to change my mindset on that like that's something that i really struggle with as well being someone that likes learning new information and like learning about new things i always felt like i can teach someone something and if the time comes up and if the situation comes up yes i will share information if it's useful but at the same time i had to change my thought process and go into things like what can you teach me and it also teaches you the quality of the friendships and the relationships that you have because now i ask I subconsciously ask with every conversation, what can this person teach me? And if I'm friends with somebody and I feel like with every conversation that we have, you never teach me nothing. And when I say teach, like I said, it doesn't mean how to make a million dollars. Maybe it's questions that makes me want to ask myself more. Maybe it's things that I feel like, hey, that would be beneficial to me to do. And that's also how I categorize my friends. And that's a whole different topic I can talk about. Friend categorization, which is very important to do, right? Every friend is not for everything. But also, I realized certain friends I just can't have certain conversations with. Certain people I just can't do certain things with. And a big way I do that is because every conversation I have with them, I think about what am I taking away from this conversation? What information are we talking about? Is there anything that they gave me? Because they're they going to give you something. 
but I realized that people would give me a lot of BS the people would give me things that weren't of importance they just were like blah I I'm sorry I gotta demote you baby you, you can't go in this category you gotta go in this category because I don't really trust you with certain kinds of information I don't really trust you with certain kinds of experiences because you're just not that person and that's another thing too like sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves about things people aren't the people that we want them to be you want to share all your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations but if you really think about it every conversation you have with this girl is about going out every conversation that you have with this person is about what the next celebrity doing it with this person doing so why are you surprised that they're not listening when you're telling them about this 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 great thing that happened to you why are you surprised when they do things that you feel like aren't good or they're not this they're not that oh you know why you're surprised why that person hurt you why that person let you down because when you're talking to them you are not listening to them you are waiting for them to say something and then responding if you start listening to people this is one of the best skills that i've done and it's helped me so much emotionally i start listening to people and i start knowing who are my real friends who are people who really care about me what are some People will literally send you warning signs. If you pay attention to the little things they say of who they truly are, a lot of times too, it may come as jokes. It may come as little hee <laughs> hee, yeah, little side comments. But after a while, you start paying attention. Certain stuff that you be like, well, how could she do this to me? How could he do this to me? You be like, that's just who they are. And you accept it or not, and that's a whole other video, and I didn't go into that too much. But I say all that to say, you need to stop feeling like you can teach everybody something. Let people teach you. Receive. Start receiving and stop trying to pour into everybody because you know some good stuff. Unless it's this channel. If you want to share this channel, I recommend to share this channel to all your friends and family. And if you're still watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because y'all don't be um subscribing. Now, I know some people are watching this video and you're like, I'm not narcissistic. I don't be thinking about myself. I just don't know what to say. I'm an introvert. And you know, I don't really be thinking about myself like that. I just don't be wanting to mess up. And I, I'm awkward. You're still the same as the person that thinks about themselves because you are thinking about yourself. That's why it's hard for you to have a conversation. Introverts and extroverts a lot of times deal with the same issues, the root of the same issue. They just express it different ways. So there's some people who constantly talk about themselves. They constantly, you know, want to talk about them, 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 them. But there's other people who go into conversations and they don't know what to say. And they often are awkward. They often say the wrong thing. They often don't really express themselves ways that they wish they would have, right? After you leave the conversation, you're like, oh, I should have said this i should have said that well at the root of it it's because you are still thinking about yourself too much you're thinking about does this person like me or i want to get this person to like me or what if they don't or what if i say something awkward or what if i do the wrong thing people can feel a lack of confidence so when you go into situations telling yourself subconsciously i'm an introvert and i don't really talk to people and i don't really know how to express myself and i don't really then that is seen in the conversation and people feel that and going back to the beginning that's another reason why you don't get what you want out of life because you know how you feel but you don't know how to express it because you're thinking too much about you i don't want to mess up i don't want this person not to like me i don't want whatever to happen and so it causes you to go into the conversations with lack of confidence. It causes you to let the other person just lead everything. You don't even talk about yourself at all, possibly you lead everything. And when you do talk about yourself, you talk about irrelevant stuff to the conversation or things that really don't make no sense. But it's because subconsciously you're thinking, I don't want to mess this up. I'm. This is not me. I'm an introvert. I don't do this. A great example of this actually happened to me recently. Now, I don't really consider myself to be an introvert. Um, but I told you guys to restart a job and I was at work and um this guy was talking to me at my job and I could already tell that he kind of liked me right so we're we're in the break room we are you know I'm waiting for him at the microwave warming up my food and he keep kind of like looking at me in the corner of his eye and I'm like are you like I'm just thinking in my head like are you gonna speak like I don't know I don't like eh, come on now so eventually you know um I go to put my food in the microwave and he sees me open the container to my food and he was like oh he said something to the effect of like oh you, you oh you brought lunch or something like that mind you I never talked to this man before I have food I'm putting in the microwave during my lunch break yes I have lunch and I was like oh yeah da, 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 yeah, yeah and he was like oh you cook and I was like yeah and he was like oh you know what you make i'm looking at you looking at me looking at you looking at my food we both looking at my food it's spaghetti like spaghetti is one of those things that is not like a, oh what's that we both know it's spaghetti whatever oh i'm like oh it's nothing much it's just spaghetti 
he was like, oh, spaghetti, I, I love spaghetti, da, 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 da. Oh, so spaghetti, so good, all this other stuff, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and I was like, okay. So then he starts to talk to me a bit more, and I could tell that he liked me. Like, it, it, it just gave off the bat that he liked me, and then he started talking about just random things. I, in a sense, no, it didn't. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It really did. It kind of made sense for the conversation, but I felt like it was just a bit weird like he was telling me how much he spent on his car insurance which was a crazy or his car note which was a crazy price um he was telling me how much he spent on rent he was just telling me all these things and i got the 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 vibe i could understand he's not that confident that's why he's saying these and what first and foremost men talking about money to me especially in the first conversation that we have together is actually a turn off are you buying me something are you getting me something with that money Oh, you're not? Okay, so what are we talking about? Like, why do I care how much your car costs and what you drive? Not Because it feels like he didn't even give the vibe, though, that he was trying to show off. He gave the vibe that he wasn't confident and he was so scared of messing up that he was just saying random things. And he felt like that thing sounded good. He felt like I probably wanted to hear that he spends all this money on his car or all this other stuff. But actually, it gave the reverse effect, um, effect. First and foremost, because it showed me that he wasn't confident. And I know that because I watch, you know, videos and read up on psychology studies and stuff of confidence. So I just knew that from the conversation. But also it made it awkward. Even if I didn't do all this information and learn all this stuff, I still would have walked away from the conversation feeling like something was off. Something was awkward. Now I know specifically what it is because like I said, I do my research, but at the same time, I still would have had the same effect whether I knew this or not. So I don't want people to have the idea like, oh, I have to read all these books and watch all these podcasts and do all this stuff. No, you just gotta subscribe to my channel and I will teach you all the signs. So I could tell just from what he was saying, he was not that confident. In the end result, he didn't get what he wanted, which was me, but in the conversation, I could tell he was thinking about himself right? He was thinking about constantly what to say. He was thinking about how can I make this girl like me? He was thinking about, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that that's the most horrible thing. Like, oh, he shouldn't have been thinking about me and he lacks confidence and I want a confident man. And da, 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 da. I do want a confident man, but at the same time, he wasn't really my type. I digress with that one. Um, but I want you to understand when you are thinking about yourself, when you are so focused on not messing up, people feel that. Some people know specifically what the problem is, someone like me more so, but others, they just, I don't really want to hire her for the job. Yeah, she has all the qualifications. Yeah, she does this. Yeah, but it's just something about her that I, I don't know. They don't know the exact thing going on a date yeah she's a real pretty girl you know she she make good money or she does this she does that but it's just something about her why because during that time period you were so focused on yourself that you showed up as an awkward version of yourself you showed up as the person basically saying please like me please like me please i hope i don't do nothing wrong please i hope i don't annoy this person i don't do this to this person I just want to get their number. I just want to get this. Instead of going into the conversation like, hey, you may like me or you may not like me, but I just want to talk to you. I just want to, like, at the root of it, at the root of conversation, you just need to try to have a conversation. Like, stop trying to be perfect. Stop trying to get them to like you. Stop trying to, because at the same time, you don't want somebody to like you if they truly don't like you. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't want somebody to like me just because I show up as someone else. I don't want somebody to like me just because I I give off this idea that I'm like this or I'm like that. No, like me at my core. Because at the end of the day, after a certain amount of time, them walls is going to fall and you will see the real me. And I'm going to be mad months down the line that you tell me that you don't like me or years down the line you don't like me. But then I can't be mad at nobody but myself because I showed up as a person that I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be cared about. I wanted to be respected. All these other things. And so you have to figure out how to show up as you and be okay with how they feel. And kind of going into that, you have to also be okay with not agreeing with people. So as I said before, and this is two reasons why that can be bad, trying to be too agreeable. First and foremost, Either they're going to like you for someone that you aren't, so then you're going to have to keep up around them being that person, which will eventually become exhausting. Or two, you're going to be too agreeable with them, and it might be to the point where they don't like you. So either they're going to like you for someone that you aren't, 
or they're not even gonna like you because they think you're just an agreeable person. They think you're just this, this, that, and they don't like that about you. And the whole time, the real you, they might've liked. They might've really liked the person that you really are, but you didn't show up as that person. So I want you to understand, it's okay to not agree with everything someone says. I think a lot of times too, especially nowadays, things just seem so, so tense. Like, I feel like adults having conversations is actually weird nowadays and that's actually weird to me. And one thing about me I've noticed is that sometimes people may say I come across as sometimes argumentative or I can come across as, um, I don't know, clashy if you will. Personally, I think first and foremost, and this is no shade, I feel like if you don't have sisters, it's very hard to understand that as well. Just in my experience, I feel like people who don't have sisters, no shade to any of my friends because a lot of my friends don't have sisters. Um, but there are also people who I experience a lot of this with. People assume just because you don't agree with them, you're having an argument. No, I literally feel this way, you feel that way. We can have a conversation about it. It's not that serious. But at the same time, I'm not gonna agree with you because that's how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna disrespect how you feel either. But why can't we not have a conversation about something that I that you do that I don't like or you like that I don't like whatever the case may be and I feel like that's a big reason why people can't have conversations because one you're scared of going into something because you're like I don't want to start an argument or two it starts an argument and it's like either way you lose lose if I don't start the conversation we never have the conversation but if I do start the conversation they gonna think it's an argument and then it's gonna make stuff worse and so I want you to understand you cannot agree with someone and it not be a problem. Like that's what I really want people to get. Two adults do not have to have the same viewpoint on everything and still be cool. I have people who, even my manager, right? We have two different political views. We can talk about it and have a conversation about it. Similar to what I said in the beginning, when I said ask two questions for every question they ask you. Yes, I can ask somebody a question about why they choose to do this. And another question about why they choose to do that. Just to figure out why do they choose to do that? Does that mean I have to dislike her? Do that mean I just have to like someone because they have a different religion? They have a different political view? They have a different, no, I don't. So don't go into conversations with the idea that you have to agree with this person. You can have conversations, and I honestly feel like that creates a better rapport with someone another thing too do not deflect compliments so yes you know you don't have to be agreeable with everyone but at the same time don't deflect compliments like if somebody's giving you a compliment i realize i had to get better with that as well someone tells you something that's nice say thank you like don't have to be like oh these old things oh i got my hair and da, 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 da. so long ago accept the compliment please and a lot of times it can start a conversation if you go into that thing recently at work as well one of my co-workers um she mentioned some she liked these sandals that I had she's like oh your sandals so cute and I'm like oh yeah I got these from Steve Madden and um I was telling her how and I'm telling y'all now um every year at the end of the the season I buy my sandals because the sandals are cheap and I was telling her how the sandals are really originally like $75 or $70 and I got them for 20 and I was like I do this every year and I just keep them obviously over the winter time but I'm like it's a great way to buy really cute sandals for a cheap price and it started a conversation and she would talk about oh when she was in high school she's from North Carolina I didn't even know that and she used to always go to Steve Madden growing up and it caused the conversation why because I didn't deflect the compliment I didn't say oh these old things I didn't say oh thank you thanks like I I went into it and I think that's another thing too like going when people throw you that hook reel it in reel it in don't deflect it don't put it on something else you don't always even have to compliment them as well I used to do that too like someone tell me they like something about me and then sometimes I used to even lie and say I like something about them just so I felt like it was a ping pong back and forth you said this, I said this, but then sometimes it's like, no, I want to lead it right now. And that's what I did in the beginning. I let it and then I let her lead the conversation and talk about herself. And we ended up having a really great conversation. Another one, when it comes to small talk, you need to start being honest. A lot of honesty too will actually cause conversation. When somebody asks you, are you okay? You don't have to say I'm okay. Because when you say I'm okay, how you doing? Good. It kind of ends the conversation. What am I supposed to say with that? I'm not saying you have to tell everyone all of your business, but also at the same time, I tell people genuinely what I'm going through sometimes. Like, hey, or you can give an essence of, right? Maybe your bills are late. Maybe you're struggling with classes. Maybe you're struggling with just life and your identity, whatever the case may be. You don't have to tell people that, but you can be like, yeah, I'm not really going through the best right now. Or yeah, life has just been, you know, um, Life has just been a lot lately. I've just been, you know, going through a lot or whatever the case may be. And the idea of it can cause 
a conversation to be had. Like stop just saying, small talk doesn't have to be small talk. Small talk can be the door into a bigger conversation. But if you are not willing to be more open, if you are not willing to be more in depth, then that is what's going to cause you to not have real conversations. And a great practice for this, because I have realized as well, you have to practice these things. Like all the things I'm talking about, they're not gonna come with the first time you have a conversation after this video, not even a second time, you have to practice. A great a uh, practice use practice board I use is with strangers the perfect thing about it is that I can tell them anything and I'm probably not going to see them again like I said you do not have to tell your deepest and darkest secrets my problem is that I'm just very open and I really don't care but I tell strangers like I just talk to strangers and have in-depth conversations and a stranger could tell you about what they're going through with their struggles and the great thing about it is a lot of times you know you can leave it on the table like you know it's not something I have to drag along this information every time I see her at a dinner party I'm like did she tell anybody that I told her that I'm going through this does anybody else know no because you're never going to see this person again like when you're in the elevator have conversations with people when you're in your uber have conversations like stop going on your phone have actual conversations with people and if they speak great Great. and if they don't speak okay next like it's not that serious but it's it's sometimes the hardest people to talk to because you don't know them but if you change your thought process around it like what can I learn from this person it makes you feel like I have all these opportunities to learn I'm gonna take them if they want to say something they're gonna say it if not they're not but I understand too rejection a lot of times too we don't have conversations because the fear of rejection um and reject the fear of rejection is actually real and is actually crippling scientists have come to the understanding that the the feeling that you get when you are rejected is the same feeling that you can get from a physical pain so it stimulates the same you know um receptor sometimes inside of your brain and obviously a physical pain is different from rejection but in our brains it doesn't know the difference so i do understand the fear of rejection i'm not going to make it seem like it's so easy but like i said it's one of those things once you get into the practice of it and then you start actually understanding the levels of rejection like do i really care that this old lady inside of the coffee shop didn't really want to talk to me or the elevator didn't really want to talk to me or is my fear of rejection more so not getting this job you get what i'm saying like a lot of times we look at everything being on the same level like this job i can't pay my bills this lady not talking to me i just saved myself 10 minutes of air you get what i'm saying like you have to also sometimes practice these things so your brain can dif differentiate hey that's not that scary your brain thinks that that thing is as scary as getting punched in the face as scary as you know falling down the stairs and we don't think that but that's what our brain feels with rejection so over time you need to get your brain to understand hey it's not that bad hey we're not gonna be hurt hey we're not gonna but it comes through repetition another reason why people sometimes don't have anything to talk about though is because you don't do anything and like I said before, I really, I feel like it's a good video. Honestly, I'm not even trying to throw it in, but my video on the, the dark side of the homebody aesthetic, we have nothing to talk about that I said I'll link um, later at the end of the video. We have nothing to talk about because we don't do nothing. That's another thing too. Like some people, all you do is go to work. All you do is go on social media as soon as you get home. All you do is watch TV. You really have nothing to talk about. And that's another reason why our conversations, a lot of times as we grow up, become so dull and lackluster sometimes compared to when we were younger. Because we can talk about, oh my gosh, Miss Miss Wilson is so annoying. Oh my gosh, Coach you know Barry is so this like we had those things to talk about but then now that we're adults and we're more so separated it's like what do we talk about it's hard to find things or if we do talk about things they're things that lack luster they're things that have no value if you want to start talking about things you have to start doing things you have to start going outside you have to start experiencing things so you have actual things to talk about like that's a big reason why people have nothing to talk about because you experience everything through your phone you watch stuff you laugh you cry everything through your phone so you have nothing to talk about that's why some people be like i have nothing to talk about you literally don't like you literally have nothing so how about we find things to do so we can talk about those things so when we have conversations we also feel like we can bring value to the table instead of feeling like people have to bring value to us and another thing i wanted to mention going back into um feeling like you can learn from everyone do not wait until people achieve things to feel like you can learn from someone and do not put people on a higher um t a higher tier because they've done things that's another thing i've realized about life if you're not familiar with the author robert green he created the book 48 laws of power the art of seduction so many other books he was saying how 
you know he was like he was in his late 30s mid to late 30s when he created the books um he was he felt like a little bit of a failure he did all you know he tried to do all these things with his life and he failed so then he created the book I mean he just became an overnight you know what it took time but essentially an overnight a uh, psychology guru and everybody start asking him these questions about people and how world works and seduction and all these other things and power and he was like the crazy part is I was sharing this stuff before I became who everyone knows me as but nobody would listen a lot of us have Robert Greens in our life you get what I'm saying we have people who know information but you're not listening to them because you only want to listen to people who have degrees you only want to listen to people who have achieved things and sometimes those are the most boring people because they have done nothing of they feel like a real substance with their life. They only did the things they felt like they were supposed to do and their parents wanted them to do and society wants them to do. So all they can talk about is a degree. All they can talk about is is how they're going to they, 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 they got this award. And it's like, yeah, but what about you? Like, who are you? Oh, well, you know me, I'm 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 a um. You know, I'm a, a businesswoman. I've been in corporate America since so and so. And it's like, yeah, but like, who are you? Some people can't tell you. So don't put people on hierarchies of feeling like you can learn from someone more just because they did something. Because a lot of times people will repeat to you stuff that you can find on YouTube. Like, oh, okay, that's how you uh, went to college. Oh, okay, that's how you uh, became a lawyer. I could Google how to do that. Like, that's not a real conversation. I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. Now, another reason why people don't listen to you is because you take way too long. You need to speak in 30 to 60 second intervals. Meaning if you're talking about something, a topic, a conversation, do not talk about that thing for three to four minutes and expect that person to listen to you. And it's not even because they don't care about you or care about what you're talking about. When you're having a conversation, you have to realize we have a very short attention span. Like just being completely honest, how many times since watching this video have you checked social media? Have you talked to somebody? Have you got distracted and lose your focus? Like I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a long video. But that also happens when we are having conversations with people, but we don't think about it like that, right? Because I expected and assumed and would have hoped everybody watched this entire video watching it, not paying attention to nothing else. But that probably didn't happen. But you have the same mindset when you're speaking to people. You talk to people on long tangents and tell them all these things. And then when they can't recite to you exactly what you said back or they don't remember exactly what you said back or they got lost a long time ago and they don't find any useful this in the conversation we feel like it's something wrong with them oh they just don't listen or they just don't care no you talk for too long right because if it was the roles were flipped you wouldn't have been able to focus for that long either so i want you to understand 30 to 60 second intervals is what you should talk in for two reasons first and foremost especially since social media and phones our attention spans are at an all-time low so people physically can't even do it because their brains just we're so geared and wired for interruptions and different things that it's hard to focus longer than, you know, 30 to 60 seconds on something actively. And then also going into a physical thing, it's very hard for our brains to remember three to four things, especially new things at a time, at a singular time. So you're trying to tell this person five, six, seven, eight things. And you're like, why are they not, you know, why can't they remember everything or why, why, why? It must be something wrong with them. No, what's wrong with you? So you need to, in conversation, similar to what I said earlier about the, for every question they ask, ask two questions. Do it in 30 to 60 second interviews. When you're telling them about something new, do it to 30 second interviews. And a lot of times too, that has, makes you have to take off the fluff. I'm a person that I could go on and on and on, if you guys haven't noticed. And so a lot of times too, I've even had to notice in conversation, there's extra things that I possibly don't need to add, but I'm adding it to it because I think it will make the conversation sound better. I think it will give me a little bit more, um, a little bit more, confidence or it will make me sound better or more intelligent or all these things but it's like actually no it's causing you to lose that person they would think you to be more intelligent if you can describe that thing more simplistically if it didn't take you as much time we think that too when we talk longer and we use bigger words we assume that people think that we're smarter no a lot of times subconsciously even though they make sometimes people do they hear you say a whole bunch of big words they think you're smarter but subconsciously they don't really build a good relationship with you if they if you think about it because it's like they don't understand what you're saying so some people might put you up on a pedestal because they're like she's so smart and she could talk about this for forever she could talk about that for forever but they sometimes don't see you as being an equal 
right? Building a, having a real conversation, building a real rapport because they're like, but she talks about this first. She does all these things I can't do. Or she goes on all these tangents or whatever the case may be. So I say all that to say, talk in 30 to 60, 30 to 60 second intervals when you're explaining things, when you're talking about things in a conversation type conversation. And another one, take away the phones. And I know some of y'all are gonna be like, oh my gosh, girl, we all hear about this. But there's some things that I think you don't hear about. And um, there's a observation study I wanna tell you guys about too. First and foremost, take away your phones because we're not as good as multitaskers as we may think we are. So when someone's having a conversation with you and you just pull out your phone and you're just scrolling on social media, a lot of that conversation, you're tuning out, you're not listening to them. So it makes of a less quality of a conversation. And then also whether the people realize it or not, it causes them to disconnect with you and the information that they're telling you during the conversation. So there was a study done not too long ago on um, people during speed dates. Now, the people didn't know that they necessarily were having a study done by them, so they just acted as if they were on a speed date. It was reported after the people who had their phones out during the conversation, mind you, didn't even use the phone, weren't even on the phone, the people who were on speed dates with them rated them less, I guess, less quality when it came to conversation, when it came to their personality, when it just came to just liking them. But why? They just had their phone out. It wasn't like it had to be up. It wasn't like they had notifications. Just the phone being out, they found that there was a less quality connection with that individual, contrary to people who did not have their phone out. And so, you know, they did the test and they did the study and the same thing happened. If this other people who didn't have their phone out this time did, people report the same thing with the new test. The thing we need to realize is the association that we have with our phones is what makes us associate things with it subconsciously so the association to use our phones right just seeing a phone makes you more likely to go to it and check on it think about how many times a day you check your email you check your dms you check the time you check your calendar you just checked your phone five minutes ago i promise you you did not get a life threatening text message i promise you nobody important dm do i promise you nobody probably even messaged you or interacted with you in the past I don't know four minutes since you checked your phone but it's just an impulse so we have to also think about the associations that we have with our phones we have an association of distraction and a lot of times we have an association with this bad thing don't get me wrong there are great things that you can see on your phone but a lot of times too as we know even from the news and social media, more coverage is on bad things. More coverage is on things that aren't good. So sometimes we put a so association with people with phones when we see them with their phones of bad things. And it's not something that scientists have been able to particularly put a um, specific kind of I guess term for or the specific reason behind why this happens to us but they just know these are the reports that people have and so I want you to understand when you have your phone out when you're having a conversation whether you're using your phone or you're not using your phone it causes a less quality conversation to happen and of course when you are on your phone of course people are not gonna you know feel like they're connecting to you whether they realize it or not and it's such a normal thing I noticed that even myself like me and my friend is having just a normal conversation. I'm just on my phone, we're on social, social media. And she thinks it's a normal thing as well because, you know, my friends do the same thing. But neither of us are realizing that it causes the lack of communication, it causes the lack of conversation, and ultimately it makes us feel possibly not the most positive way about each other. Even though we are friends, even though we do care about each other, so on and so forth, it causes the quality of the conversation to deteriorate. And that's what this whole world is about quality of conversation this is what has been been so detrimental to us as a human species the quality of connection the quality of conversation we need to feel connected on so many levels there's so many i mean a million and one studies on connectivity when we feel disconnected when we feel isolated like i said before there's things of depression there's things of just mental health but there's also things of cutting off your lifespan People who are married tend to live longer. People who have something to live for. When people feel like they are cared about. When people feel like people understand them. They feel like they have something more to live for. They have another reason to wake up. They have another reason to keep going. More so when people feel like nobody understands them. Nobody cares about them. Nobody listens to them. They feel isolated and they feel like me, me, me. So if I do something bad to myself or if I do this or I do that or even you know put myself in a bad situation, who's going to care? It's me. But they don't 
realize that's because it's so crazy if you get to the root of it our lack of knowing how to communicate I also recommend watching my video on building a relationship with yourself because sometimes we do not know how to communicate because we don't have a good relationship with ourselves, and that's a whole nother thing like sometimes you ever feel something but you just feel like I don't know how to put it into words and I don't know how to communicate it but I know this feeling that I have a lot of times that comes from not having a good relationship with ourselves, not being able to pinpoint or articulate or specifically express what we're feeling but we know we're feeling some way and so I definitely will go and um, watch that video as well. I'll link it on here. But thank you guys so much for watching my video. Um, tell me if it was helpful for you. Um, tell me if you've been dealing with anything such as communication, conversation issues, or this is something that you experience, whether it's dating, whether it's family, whether it's friendship, and you just like, yes, I, I notice as well, people don't have conversation skills because I've definitely noticed it. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much and have a great one. And don't forget to check for new videos every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you all.